can a motion pitcher that blatantly rips off half a dozen other motion pitchers possibly be any good on its own? Let's take a look. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1997 to look at a movie that kind of gets overlooked and kind of forgotten, The Relic. Hidden gem? Piece of trash? Whatever, we'll get there. But before we go any further, before we dig into this any farther, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. Okay, this motion picture is directed by Peter Himes. Himes, Himes, people pronounce it differently. Who really cares? Anyway, I've talked about him before. He's done some really good stuff. We'll talk about he's done motion pictures like 2010, the year we made contact, and A Sound of Thunder, which gets way overlooked, and Outland, which I still plan on doing, and The Presidio, and The Musketeer, and Running Scared, which was a great little flick, and uh, Time Cop, and Stay Tuned and uh, Capricorn One, which I've also reviewed, and The Star Chamber, and Hanover Street, and End of Days, which I've also reviewed. So, this guy, he's got a hell of a track record. I'm not saying this is one of his best, I'm not saying it's one of his worst. Well, but, but, that, that's for later, that's for later. Let's get going to the cast. Okay, playing Dr. Margot Green, Penelope, and Miller. Been to some things. Let's check it out. We're talking about she's been in motion pictures like Big Top Pee Wee and The Artist and Dead Bang. And you probably remember mostly like from like Carlito's Way. But she was in like Biloxi Blues and The Freshman and uh, Kindergarten Cop and Chaplin and The Shadow and Along Came a Spider. And she was on TV and like Amazing Crime and uh, uh, The Closer. So, been around. You know what I mean? You probably recognize her. She's been in some shit. Just the way it goes. Playing Lieutenant Vincent D'Agosta, Tom Sizemore. Been some good stuff. Let's take a look. We're talking about he's been in a favorite of mine, Strange Days. You remember I reviewed that thing. And he was also in Wyatt Earp, and Red Planet, and Heat, and Passenger 57, and Black Hawk Down, and Pearl Harbor, and Saving Private Ryan, for Christ's sakes, and The Florentine, and Red Planet, and he was in a... A movie that I gotta cover at some point because it was actually it was the shit, but it gets completely never brought up, and that was bringing out the dead with Nicolas Cage. Oh, I gotta get there. I'll get there. Okay, playing Dr. Kurtzberg. Small stature, great in ability. Linda Hunt. Let's go. She's been in movies like Kindergarten Cop and Dune and She Devil and Silverado and The Bostonians and Popeye. In the year of living dangerously, which really probably got her the most notoriety. And she was on TV too, you know, The Practice, 
NCISLA, and she was on a TV show called Carnival that was on HBO for a while. So, out there, does her thing. Good actress. Let's keep rolling. Okay, playing Dr. Frock. It's one of those guys I love to talk about, never get a chance to that much. James Whitmore. Let's kick it. Long career. Here we go. He's been in stuff like them, which is one of my favorite little sci-fi movies of all times. And Madigan, and Planet of the Apes, and Shadow's Land with the one and only fucking Bronson. And he was in TV stuff, you know, Raw High, Dr. Kildare, uh, The Loner, uh, 12 O'Clock High, and The Virginian, in The Big Valley, and Gunsmoke. So he's on a lot. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He was, he was in uh, Tora, 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 the motion picture, too. So, I'm telling you, the guy was in a shitload of stuff. Distinctive face, good actor. Is what it is. If you're my age, you remember him. Playing Hollinsworth. Clayton Rohner. Okay. Okay, maybe it doesn't jump out at you, but let's take a look. We're talking about he has been in stuff like April Fool's Day and I, Madman. And if you are of my age, you would remember he was in that great little flick, Just One of the Guys. But he did a lot of TV, too, like Hill Street Blues and Murder One and Good vs. Evil and Daybreak and ER and Crossing Jordan and Angel and Beverly Hills and I Know 210, which you couldn't really get me to watch if you stuck a fork in my eye. Doesn't make a difference. Is what it was. Just for Just One of the Guys. I mean, come on. Shit, man. That shit's classic. Playing Greg Lee. Tree Mulo. Been on TV and some shit, folks. You might not jump out at you, but you might remember. Anyway, we're talking about he was on stuff like Dharma and Greg and Spin City and Vanishing Sun and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Nick Tuck and uh, uh, Malcolm in the Middle and uh, Smallville and Law and Order and uh, Quantum Leap and China Beach. So he, he made the rounds on a lot, a lot of TV shows. Bless his heart is what it was. And, and there's a lot of other people in this motion picture, too, that are going to pop in and pop out. You say, I think I remember. I, I've seen him. I've seen it. That kind of stuff. Nobody major, nothing major, but there'll be faces. Okay, everybody, I'm going to keep this to 90 seconds or less to keep it fast, keep it moving, keep it going, so we can get to the summation where we'd all rather be. And besides, the plot of this movie is so goddamn convoluted. It is what it is. You got this anthropologist. He's out there. He's hanging in the jungle with some natives. Ooh, they give him some sippy sippy drink and it kind of sends him on a tear. Next thing you know, he's loading some artifacts and some stuff onto a ship, but he's begging the captain, hey, take it off, take it off, whatever. You really don't understand what the hell they're talking about. Anyway, he hops on board to look for this stuff. And then it cuts to another scene where, you know, the ship's pulling in the dock. Days later, weeks later, whatever. Doesn't make a difference. Oh, there's a problem, though. The whole crew's missing. They can't find it. Tom Sizemore is this lieutenant. He goes in there to look to find where the hell these people went, where the crew are. And what do they find? Below decks, underneath the floor, the entire crew beheaded and their homotuba waba waga sucked out of their fucking brains for no apparent reason. Well, cut to this local museum where the crates that he was sending just happened to wind up going. They just find in there a little statue, some leaves with some viral fungal shit on it. Doesn't make a difference. And before you know it, people start dying. Bad shit starts happening. Next thing you know, Tommy Sizemore shows up and says, hey, this looks like the shit that was happening on that boat. I think they're related. Now, nah, the powers that be, the mayor, the museum curators, they don't want anything to happen. They don't want anything to ruin this big gala event that they got coming up. So things get overridden. The party continues and all hell breaks loose. Will they get out? Will everybody live? Does anybody really give a shit? It's one of those movies where the plot is what the plot is. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's just get to the summation because that's, that's where we're going to party. Okay, everybody, let's get real. Does the relic work? Yeah. And no. It depends on what you're looking for in this motion picture. Let's be honest. Before we dig into everything I mean, let's get the regular crap out of the way. The directing? Hey man, Peter Himes knows how to make a motion picture look beautiful. And he does it with this motion picture also. He can frame a shot. You know the guy's good. He can put something on the screen that makes you want to look at it. That goes without question. That part is fine. That's not really an issue. The writing? It is what it is in this kind of motion picture. You know, there's a little bit too much of that dumb shit. What I want to know is, how the fuck do I get out of here? You know, that kind of crap. You know what I mean? It's, it's in this motion picture littered throughout it. 
It is what it is. It doesn't ruin it, but it sure as hell doesn't help it. The acting? Yeah, everybody does a pretty good job. Sizemore delivers a Sizemore performance, and that's what you really want, and he gives it to you. Good enough. Linda Hunt, we all know she knows what she's doing. That's not an issue. Everybody else pulls it. There's times when you feel like Penelope Ann Miller's been put in a situation where she's like, what do I do with this character, and how do I make this shit work? Mm, how much is her fault? Eh, how much is just trying to slog through this thing? It goes back and forth. But she does an earnest job. She tries. She gets it across. She doesn't really hurt the movie. It's not her best work. But it is what it is. Now let's cut to the brass taxes. Does the movie work again, like I said earlier? Yeah, but you have to have your expectations fairly low and don't care if you don't see stuff that is completely unoriginal. This movie ripped off so many other motion pictures. It's almost disturbing. And I don't mean just ripped off the subject matter. I don't mean just ripped off the scenes. I mean ripped off the shots and the camera angles. There is so much of Alien and Aliens in this motion picture. It's not even funny. I mean, it's not even funny. There is scenes in this motion picture where you're saying, Jesus God Almighty, I am watching the Poseidon Adventure. Watch the scene where they're fighting to get out of the museum. Watch that scene. That is the scene from the Poseidon when it's upside down and you see Gene Hackman fighting with everybody back and forth about, no, we must go, and they're like, no, we must stay. I'm like, Jesus, God, it's the same scene. It's almost word for word. It's kind of blatant. I couldn't believe they went down the path that heavy, but they did. There's also little nods to other motion pictures, other horror flicks. Jesus, there was one scene I even seen of Life Force coming right through the motion picture. I'm like, my God, did they, did they miss anything? A little, little bit of Die Hard is in there, too. Did they miss anything? This motion picture literally is a bunch of other motion pictures chopped up, reorganized, slams together, so you have a monster in a museum motion picture, which, again, goes into the other problems of this motion picture. Man, there is plot holes all over and improbability everywhere. Where have you ever seen a museum built up more securely than Fort Friggin' Knox? I live near a, a museum. I, they don't have sliding doors that are like 8-inch thick steel every 10 feet. They just don't. I don't know what this movie was thinking. I don't know what they tried to make you believe. But the movie really, really pushed it a little bit far. And that's the thing you have to do to enjoy this movie. You have to suspend all logic. You have to completely go past anything that reminds you of a movie that you've already witnessed and loved and just say, I'm going to forget I've seen that, I'm going to forget I've seen that, I'm going to pretend this is original, I'm going to pretend this is original. If you can do that, and if, for the love of God, you're watching this motion picture on your television set and you have the darkness up, like a lot, you better lighten up the contrast, man, because I'm telling you, there are, half this movie is so goddamn dark you are not going to be able to see what the hell is going on. Literally, this movie is one of the darkest motion pictures you will ever see on film. It's dark. The scenes are dark. The hallway tunnels are dark. Everything is dark where you're like, I'm telling you, I don't know what the cinematographer was doing, but they, they went a little bit too much into the dark. Now, what are the redeeming features of this motion picture? Well, basically, it's a simple old monster movie. Like I said, big monster trapped in a museum. Yeah, they put a bunch of techno babble in there to try to make it seem more plausible and more logical than basically what they're giving you, but this is the setup to a beast 50s monster movie that they're just trying to roll along and make it seem a little bit more intelligent than what it is. It's not. Just take it as a dumb flick, take it as a sci-fi channel movie with a better budget and better effects, and that's one of the things I should give some credit to. The practical effects in this are fun and cool to look at. There's times when you see the big monster head, and there's times when you see the creature in its full entirety, and those were practical effects, and they built those things, and they look really, really cool. You can tell that Stan Winston did them. You can tell some scenes, actually, you can tell that they kind of ripped off a little bit of Jurassic Park, but that's another thing. Anyway, you can tell it's a Stan Winston flick, and it looks good. There are parts of it where they throw in the CGI, and it was a little bit before maybe CGI should have been used for such things. And those scenes kind of jump out a little bit more. You're like, that's a computer. That's a computer. But the practical effect scenes look cool. They look fun. 
They look great, and you enjoy them. But like I said, the key to this motion picture is to suspend all logic, forgive all plot holes, and forget the fact that you are just seeing regurgitated shit over and over and over and over and over again. And if you can block all that out of your head and just watch it for what it is, that it's not a bad way to kill an hour and 45 minutes. Am I going to tell you it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen? No. Is it one of those movies where I'm going to beg you guys to go see it? You know, oh my God, for the love of all that is holy, you got to get out there and check this out. Nah, it's not one of those. But, got a little time to kill? You're flicking around on a streaming service? You want to see something halfway decent that'll send you off into sleep sleep land at night? The Relic will do the job. Okay, everybody, be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Be kind to a stranger. Be good to a friend. But most of all, and without exception, never, and I mean ever, take any bullshit from anybody. Be good.